this is the sixth part of my lecture on probability distributions in which I'll provide a summary of what I've said so far. We've talked about probability distributions which define the probability of obtaining a given result from a measurement and we looked at four common distributions the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, the normal distribution and the T distribution. The binomial distribution, we said, was the, due to Bernoulli trials with two outcomes, an outcome of success or failure. A probability of success we defined as P, the probability of failure was defined as Q, which has to be 1 minus P because P and Q must add up to 1. In that case, the binomial distribution gives the probability of a given number of successes in n independent Bernoulli trials. We had examples of that like tossing a coin and rolling dice. The binomial distribution is characterized by n, the number of trials, and p, the probability of success. It has a mean equal to n times p and a standard deviation equal to the square root of the mean times q. For large n, for large numbers of trials, the binomial distribution tends towards the normal distribution. Then we looked at the Poisson distribution. That also is a result of Bernoulli trials, but only successes can be counted for the Poisson distribution. We don't care about the number of failures. In fact, it's the limit of the binomial distribution when n is large and p is small. It's characterized by the mean value m only. You don't need to know the details of n and p. It has a mean value m and a standard deviation equal to the square root of the mean. The percentage standard deviation reduces as the mean increases. It applies to lots of things, but in particular to radioactive decay, which makes it most important for nuclear medicine studies, where we talk about the Poisson noise, the random fluctuation in the number of counts. And for a large mean value m, the Poisson distribution tends towards the normal distribution. The normal distribution is a continuous approximation to these discrete distributions, and it's good when the mean is more than somewhere about 10. It's characterized by a mean and standard deviation, and the standard deviation can be varied independently of the mean. However, we often talk about the standardized normal distribution, which is defined to have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And 95% of all measurements are within plus or minus 2 standard deviations either side of the mean and the sum of a large number of independent random variables will be approximately normally distributed. That's the central limit theorem, and that's why the normal distribution occurs quite so often. It's often used as an approximation for many types of measurements, and we'll see it used many times in the next few lectures. Finally, we looked at the student's t-distribution, which again is a continuous distribution, similar to the standardized normal distribution, but we use it when the sample size is small, something less than about 30. It's characterized by something called the degrees of freedom, and again it has a mean defined as zero, but the standard deviation depends on the number of degrees of freedom and is slightly greater than the standard deviation of the normal distribution. So that completes my second lecture on statistics where we've been looking at probability distributions. We'll see how to apply these probability distributions in future lectures.